It's my uh, pleasure to introduce Dr. Nan Yancey, who will serve as the panel moderator for the Business and Industry Leaders Session. Dr. Yancey is the Dean of Graduate Studies at Lewis University in Romeoville, and she is a professor of nursing. Please welcome Dr. Yancey. Thank you, Bob, and welcome this morning. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the members of our Business and Industry Leadership Panel. I would invite you to welcome Mrs. Mary Kriego. She's a Senior Vice President for State Farm Insurance of Bloomington, Illinois, and Chair of the Illinois uh, Chamber of Commerce. Dr. Arthur Patton, who's the Director of Motorola uh, Knowledge Community Resource Office and Manager of Global Engineering Education from uh, Motorola of Chicago. Mr. Steve Shire, who's a Senior Vice President for Consolidated Communications of Mattoon, Illinois. And Mr. Chris Tingley, who's a president, uh, partner and president of Tingley Insurance Agency of Effingham, Illinois, and a member of the Illinois Chamber of Commerce. Our business and industry panel uh, representatives will contribute to our discussion this morning related to the Path Forward report. Uh, and the recommendations to advance the creation of effective partnerships uh, between graduate study at universities and business and in industry. To begin this session, each one of our representatives will uh, provide their perspective on how leaders of graduate education in Illinois uh, will, can and should be working with, could work with our graduate programs to foster strong and productive liaisons with business and industry in Illinois. Issues discussed in the path forward, including how to create productive and forward-thinking advisory councils uh, related to the design and evaluation of the quality of our graduate programs, how to increase and promote experiences that enhance graduate study, and how to secure scholarships and funding um, related to fostering innovation and access are also going to be discussed. Our goal for this panel with our business and industry is to dis discussion is to be the beginning of a continuing discussion at our campuses and across our campuses and in our state on best practices for advancing the economic uh, prosperity of Illinois through partnerships with business and industry. Uh, after opening comments, we will open the floor to questions from the audience again. And so I invite Mary to begin. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Uh, it was a beautiful drive down with all the trees changing this morning, and it felt good just to get out and drive and think rather than uh, being on an airplane. Uh, <laughs> so it was wonderful. Just to let you know a little bit about, I do have some connection to Eastern. My mother was a graduate of Eastern Illinois University, and uh, took all of her classes in Old Main at that time in the late 40s, so that's been some time ago. Um, I also have, and please don't anybody tell him, one of my favorite cousins is the local priest here and also the priest at the Newman Center, and if he knows I was in town and left without seeing him, <laughs> I will hear about it at Thanksgiving. So, uh, mom is the word, if you would, please. <laughs> I also need to probably confess that uh, I do not possess a graduate degree. Uh, it's that Catholic guilt coming out, you know, we may as well get the confession out there ahead of time. And uh, in fact, of my, of my two parents and, and there are six kids in my family, I'm the only one that does not have a graduate degree, of which my sister reminds me, you know, Mary Eva, you're virtually unlettered. And I said, well, it's, it's been okay. Um, I want to let you know that it's been fascinating. I was, I was not able to get here right at the beginning, but even just the discussion that I heard enjoyed it tremendously. And I think that, I think that one of the most important roles that graduate schools can play is that of a convener of, of the parties of gathering people together as I think about as I think about from a business standpoint really when you look at uh, and our our organization has been very involved in education primarily from the K through 12 level our chairman and CEO Ed Rust has been very very involved with that um, 
it's it's critical from a service learning standpoint. It seems to be a, a model of service learning that really appeals to people, but I think that that certainly applies to young people, whether that's in undergraduate school or graduate school. And if you think about, in fact, I think her name was Lauren that was from Senator Durbin's office, and she was talking about young people are a little different, you know, they, and having two 20-something kids, I can, I can agree with that. But I think that what they, what they really get charged up about is working on something that they believe in that's going to truly make a difference. And if you look at some of the some of the societal issues that we have and bringing business and academia and the individuals around the table to be able to work on real life problems together and find solutions for the places that they live and work to make it a better place, while also learning some of the disciplines that they're involved in, I think that those are incredibly important to people, and, and it's been a wonderful model. If you look at the power that especially you as academics leading these graduate schools have to be able to bring those parties together, I think that in many cases you you underestimate the importance of your role and your prestige within the community. You're a bit of a neutral party. Um, you you can bring together whether it's a legislative or whether it's a you know a business interest, especially if you're all working towards the same goal. And I was delighted to meet Jeannie Dow earlier this morning, and she was telling me a little bit about what she does with, is it the Business and Innovation Center, Jeannie? Is that Business Solutions Center, where they're actually going, working with their undergraduate students, going in to teach some of those entrepreneur, entrepreneurial skills to eighth graders on up? I mean, that's, that's an incredibly powerful contribution to the community in which they live and work and attend school. And I think that, you know, that's, that's it on a local scale. But if you think about what are some of those huge societal problems that we're all dealing with? It's not just, it's not just local issues. It's, you know, Chris and I are on the Illinois Chamber Board and, and the the Asian carp issue in the waterways, you know the I mean you're talking about with all of these issues, it could be anywhere from you know the science and engineering communities to the humanities to whatever particular discipline that your area represents. But what are some of those issues that you could be the people that bring people together? Because I can tell you that there will be funding for research if it's something that's going to be meaningful, that's going to be, that's going to be directly relevant, not even necessarily to something that the business is going to make profit on, but something that's very, that's very important to them you know, like our involvement in education because that's our future workforce. With 67,000 employees in, in the U.S. and Canada, that's of critical importance to us. So that would be one of the first things I would talk about. Um, just don't underestimate your importance to that business community and that legislative community. I also have to say uh, I appreciated the gentleman's question about arts and the humanities uh, also being important along with the, the science and technology and engineering. Um, as an English major, undergrad, uh, when I started with State Farm 31 years ago, I've certainly learned the insurance business and done the requisite you know, courses and designations for that in the financial <coughs> services area.